Okay, what is a unilateral benefit bailment and a mutual benefit bailment? Uh, well, as we previously discussed, a bailment is when you um, charge another person with holding or possessing property uh, that you own or ownership rights that you have ownership rights in. Uh, so, a unilateral benefit bailment is where simply one party, unilateral, one party benefits from the bailment scenario. That is, if I uh, ask you to look after my car and you say, sure, you can park your car uh, in, in my garage. Well, in that situation, if you're not receiving any benefit from this, you're simply doing me a favor, but I needed, I needed your help in this way, then I'm receiving the benefit. It's a unilateral benefit for me. Now, if you ask me, can you borrow my car? Uh, and I say, sure, just take care of it and you take my car, well, you're not paying me, I'm not receiving any benefit from that. You're receiving the entire benefit from it. Again, that is a unilateral benefit in, um, it, it, that benefits the bailee. So I'm the person lending the car, I'm the bailor, uh, you're the person holding the car, you're bailee. So in the first example, it's a unilateral benefit bail bailment in favor of the bailor. In the second scenario where the bailee is using the car for his or her benefit, it's a unilateral uh, benefit bailment in the bailee's benefit, uh, for the bailee's benefit. Now, a mutual benefit bailment is where both parties benefit in some way. So say I need you to look after my car. So I say, hey, will you look after my car? And you say, of course, you can park it in my garage. Well, I pay you for that, okay? Or I do something else of value or transfer some other level of value to you in exchange for you holding or keeping or looking after my car. In that situation, we have a mutual benefit bailment. Okay, there's value going both ways. And the reason this distinction between a unilateral bailment, unilateral benefit bailment, and a mutual benefit bailment is important is because it changes the level of rights and responsibilities between the parties. Uh, for example, generally the bailor has the right to receive the property back from the bailee at the end of the bailment. The bailee, unless the agreement somehow otherwise limits, has the ability to possess and use the property during the time of the bailment. Now, we may have an agreement that says otherwise, but so with a mutual benefit bailment, more the contractual provisions apply. There, there could be um, any number of contractual uh, terms or applications, uh, the requirements on the bailor and the bailee as far as paying the bailee uh, at, for, for their, the value that they receive. And the bailee uh, might have uh, obligations uh, specific to how they care for the item or what is reasonably expected. Outside of that, in a unilateral benefit bailment, generally the bailee, uh, the, the uh, individual receiving the greatest benefit whether the bailor or the bailee in the situation, whoever is receiving the benefit in the unilateral benefit bailment is going to have a higher duty of care or standard of care that they owe to the other party. That, it, that may be warning the other party about any potential dangers uh, they may face when possessing the property. It may be a higher standard of care to keep the property safe and unharmed. So anyway, that's the reason the distinction between the two is quite important because the uh, duties and the rights associated with the bailment uh, change as to who receives benefit.